This video covers assembly of the Agent 390 track robot kit. For this project you will need a Phillips head screwdriver, a 7 64th inch hex key, and a 3 32nd inch hex key. For the first step you're going to attach the 1.5 inch standoff to the outside of your 18 inch channel. In between the standoff and the channel you'll place this plastic spacer there and you'll use the 7 16th inch hex screws for that. And then you'll tighten those up using the 764 inch hex key. And then this step you're actually going to do a couple more times. You're going to attach the spacers so that they're on the outsides. You'll attach them on the 12th hole from the, the top. If you're using these top sets of holes, you'll move in 12 and then you'll move in 7. So when you get it done, it's going to look like this. So as you can see, you have the standoffs placed on the outside of your channel and you have them on the outside holes. You'll move in 12 sets of holes and you'll place them there. And then you'll move in an additional 7 and you'll place them there so it'll look just like that. Once that's done, you'll place the channel hub mounts onto the opposite side of your channel. So you place them on here like this and you'll have it so that the screws on the hub mount are facing towards the, the open end of the channel and this closed top side. And this step we'll use the 5 16 inch hex screws. And you'll do that for both sides of the channel. Again, placing it so that your hub mount has the open end of the screws facing up towards the open side of the channel. Okay, once you have that together, we're going to put together our motor mount, so we'll put that off to the side for a minute. And we'll bring in our planetary gear motor mount along with our gear motor, and we're going to put those two together. And for this, you'll use the Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, once we have our gear motor and motor mount connected, we're going to bring our 18 inch piece of channel back in and we're going to connect the motor to the side of the channel that had the hub adapters. And your, your, uh, your motor will go into the next available slot just next to where you have that hub adapter connected to the channel. And just like with the last step, this is going to use quarter inch socket head screws. Once you have the motor fastened onto the channel, we're going to again put that off to the side and we're going to next put together our wheels. The first step for that, we need a wheel adapter and the hub adapter and we're going to put those two together. We'll put the hub adapter right inside of the wheel adapter and then we're going to connect those using quarter inch socket head screws. The next step will be to attach this to one of the hub pulleys. So it's going to go together like this. You put it in so that the screws where you just attached are inside the ring on the hub pulley. And then your piece that you have, it's got tapped holes and untapped holes. And you're going to place it so that the untapped holes line up with the smaller holes on your hub pulley. When you have that together, you're going to place on washers. followed by 9 16 inch screws and finally you'll feed on 0.75 inch standoffs onto the bottom of it
Once you have those in place, you go ahead and add another pulley there, followed by the washers again, and then again 9 16 inch screws. Alright, once you have that done, you go ahead and tighten up all of the screws, and then you're actually going to do this step for six wheels. So you'll do it five more times. You can click on the button that's on the screen right now, and that'll take you right back to the beginning of this step so you can start over. The next step is to add one of the wheels that you've made to the shaft on your motor. So the first step for that is to add this set screw collar to the output shaft of your motor. You just slide that on and tighten that up using your 332nd inch hex key. You might have to loosen up one of the uh, set screws there a little bit just to get that on. Once that's on, you're going to add on your ball bearing onto the inside of the channel. So that'll slide in there and then just go right in the hole. And then finally, you're going to place in your D shaft inside in through that ball bearing. But in between the ball bearing and your set screw collar, you're going to add this clamping collar so that clamping collar will just slide there inside and then your shaft will go through both of those and into the clamping collar. All right, once that's in the clamping collar you just tighten that up again using the 332nd inch hex key and then tighten that clamping collar so that the ball bearing is all the way into the channel. You don't want to tighten it too tight, otherwise you might restrict the movement of your shaft. But just place that kind of up against the ball bearing there and use the 764 cents hex key to tighten that in place. All right, before we add the wheel onto this shaft, we're actually gonna go through and place on our other two shafts onto the channel. So for this part, well, next we're going to add the shaft inside the second set of standoffs, so it's going to go right there in the middle. You're going to place a ball bearing onto the outside of the channel, so the same side that the motor is on. And then you're going to run your shaft through that ball bearing all the way through until there's just enough space on it to add this clamping collar. And you're going to put that on the outside and then tighten that clamping collar in place. I guess that would help if I showed you the side that it's on. You're going to do that again on uh, another shaft. So you can kind of just set it up like this. Put the clamping collar onto your shaft, slide on the ball bearing, and then it'll all go through the channel. And once that's in, you just tighten that in place. All right, next, we're gonna add onto the other side. You're gonna put on another ball bearing. That'll slide down that way. And then you're gonna put on a plastic spacer. Followed by a set screw collar. Now these set screw collars, they'll probably come with a set screw in them. But you can just take that out and it's going to slide on there because we're basically for this part, we're just using that as a spacer. And again, you're going to do that onto this one as well. So ball bearing, plastic spacer, and your set screw collar that's just working as a spacer again. Alright, so now you're going to add your wheels to the shafts. The, uh, the wheels, when you put those together, they have a clamping hub on the inside, and on the inside there, there's a screw that you use to tighten that clamping hub. You're going to put those on so that the clamping hub is on the inside, so basically the side that's towards your motor. So you slide that on, and then you'll use the screw that's in your clamping hub and 764 cinch hex key and you'll tighten that in place. And you're going to do that for each of these three shafts. Okay, so once those are on, you're going to slide your track on, and those are going to go on in between the gap in between the standoffs and the wheel. So slide that on on this side. Then you'll slide it on on this side as well. Okay. 
Then you're going to add the channel bracket to the outside of the wheels, and you're going to use 3 8 inch hex screws for that. And once that's on, you're going to add a ball bearing again, followed by uh, another clamping hub. And that'll go on and tighten on using 764 inch hex key. You're going to do that for each of the three wheels. So we'll go ball bearing inside of the channel plate and 3 8 inch screws to connect that all together. Okay, so last step once you get this done is going to be to go back and do it all over again. However, there's a little bit of a trick to that. You're going to need two of these, but you're going to need two that are each a different side. So if you go back and do the step exactly how I have it, you're going to end up with two of one side and none of the other, and you're going to be kind of upset because you have to go back and do it again. Uh, the easiest way to do that when you set up uh, your next step is to just make sure that you have uh, your channel, your second step, facing so that either the open side is up or the closed side is up so that they're both the same way. You want to make sure that where you put the standoffs are facing out, just like here how they're facing out. And then when you get to the step with the motor, you'll just attach the motor so that they're on the same side as this one, but the inside. So same side uh, lengthways of the channel, but opposite side widthways. Once you have both sides of the channel complete, you're going to use a 9 inch piece of channel to connect them. So you'll add those to the hub mounts here on each side and you'll use the 5 8 inch screws to connect those. And when you connect those, you're actually only going to put in the 5 8 inch screws on the bottom side or the open side of the channel. And we'll get to why you're going to do that here in a second. And then we'll add it to the other side. Again, 5 8 inch screws. And then we'll just connect the other piece. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the reason that you didn't put the 5 8 inch screws on the top is because you're actually going to place in your 9 inch by 12 inch channel plate and you're actually going to use a 7 16 inch screw to put those through each of those connectors. And you place the other plate on the other side. And your final step is going to be to use these channel connector plates to connect the middle of the two channels. So you have to actually get up inside of the channel there and they lay down in here like this. And again, this uses the 5 16 inch screws.
And that's all there is to it. That's the Agent 390 Track Robot Kit. If you have any questions about this project, feel free to contact us at tech at servocity.com. And as always, thank you for watching.